Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about one of the very important concepts in a data analytics project called medallion architecture. Uh, if you have worked in data analytics project, if you are part of a data analytics team, or if you have been in a data analytics conference, you might have heard this term called medallion architecture, and you wonder what that is and uh, you also probably heard some misconceptions around it such as would you be able to use medallion architecture if you are using Microsoft Fabric or you have to choose between Microsoft Fabric and medallion architecture or you cannot use medallion architecture if you are using Power BI combined with Fabric and Snowflake together how these all together works uh, lots of misconceptions around it, which normally comes from the fact that uh, people don't know what medallion architecture is. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what is medallion architecture, uh, why do we need it, how do we set it up uh, in Microsoft Fabric environment uh, and any other environment and learn all the mm, things you need to know about medallion architecture. Let's jump into this video. So in order to understand the medallion architecture, the first step is to, uh, is to understand why do we need a medallion architecture. I'll start that with a sample scenario. Um, assume, let's assume that I am a part of a bigger data analytics team in my organization. Uh, we are in charge of building the BI system, the data warehousing system, and all the uh, ingredients of building a data analytical system and reporting for the business to use. Now, in the business, we also have some self-service users. Uh, Michael, who is part of the sales department and is a self-service user in the sales department, knows how to build reports and dashboards using Power BI. Uh, but he wants to build reports and dashboards in Power BI using the data that comes from SAP source system. They use that SAP source system. Uh, now the challenge is that he does not have access to that SAP source system. So he comes to me or someone in the data analytics team and ask us for giving them access to the data warehouse, that star schema data warehouse, fact tables, dimension tables, cleaned data warehouse access so that he can go and build the solution that he uh, the reports that he wants. Uh, now here comes the challenge. In the data warehouse system, we do not have the part of data that he is looking for. Um, we haven't had time to bring that data yet. The data analytics team being busy with a lot of other requests from other team, from HR, from inventory team, from uh, many other teams came to us and sent their requests, requirements. We put them in a list based on the priority we go and choose which one to go and do and his request is somewhere down in the line it might take some time for us to connect to the data source that he wants SAP bring that data uh, clean it match it with the rest of the data uh, build some conform dimensions bring it into a fact table structure this would take a lot of time and by the time that we provide this to him it would be probably like six months, nine months, which is a ridiculous time from his point of view because he wants to build that data. He does not care about if that data matches with the data coming from uh, the CRM system that he has or, or any other thing. So he just wants to build that data from that SAP source system. If me or anyone in the data analytics team, we cannot answer his requirement and we say you have to wait six months or nine months he's not going to wait for that much time obviously what he's going to do is to go and build the report based on some uh, excel extracts or csv extract from sap system that he produces manually and that would cause a lot of other issues because later on you want this data to be this report to be automatically updated it cannot be automatically updated when it is produced manually like that uh, it comes with from a source system that is not part of our data analytics system 
it comes with a lot of challenges when it is built like that. So uh, how we can answer something like this, how the analytical team can answer things like that? Well, medallion architecture is one of the answers for that. So how the medallion architecture works in this scenario? Uh, or what is medallion architecture? Medallion architecture talks about the quality of data not being the same all the time. It talks about the fact that we do not have enough time nor enough resources in our organization to build everything in the gold uh, based quality, 100% quality data. And the quality of data is not always a binary concept. It's not no quality or yes quality is not like that it's a it's a variety of quality we are dealing with some systems have a really good quality of the data data comes from a database system that has been done that have had a lot of data quality checks in it sometimes it comes from a source system such as text file which doesn't really have any data quality checks and lots of errors in that data our job is to provide all of those data because they are all valuable for the business anyway for analytics and of course parts of the data takes time to be on a really good quality uh, and that is why something such as medallion architecture works really best so the way that the medallion architecture works is based on a layered system uh, in this layered system, we define different layers of the data. We say, for example, the raw data that we are getting from the source system, like from that SAP system, from a SQL Server database system, from a text file, from Excel files in SharePoint, all of those, we are getting those, uh, we bring them all into a database. Some call it data lake, some call it lake house, some call it warehouse, the term doesn't really matter. Into a repository, you bring all that data. Normally it is one-on-one -on -one copy from the source. You don't filter the data, you don't change anything, you don't uh, try to match that data from one system to another system. It's just raw data, uh, just you bring it in the table format. And that is what we call as a bronze layer of the data. You define this, um, this characteristic of the data with it. So when you share this data with uh, someone in your organization, you say that we haven't checked this quality of the data. This is bronze level data. We haven't tried to match it with something else. So uh, the risk is uh, whatever you are building might not be 100% accurate because it is whatever is in the system. We haven't done any filtering and any cleansing of it. And from there, you'll go and build some cleansed version of it. So you'll have more time, more resources to go and build cleansed version of it. You conformed it with other systems. So you try to match some of these systems together, find some anomalies, filter them out. You have a much better cleaned version of that data that you bring it into a database again or data warehouse, whatever you might call it. And this is called as silver layer of the data. Silver layer of the data is of course much more reliable. The quality of data is much better than bronze layer, but usually you have much less data um, domain covered in here because it takes time to build it. So if you have like all the data domains in the bronze layer, you don't have all of that in the silver layer. Your silver layer data is much less than that however the quality is much better so when the business goes and build reports from it they know that they have a better quality and as a result their data would have better um, number more accurate numbers in it and of course on top of that from silver you can go and build fully fledged star schema dimension tables fact tables uh, with the relationships, calculations, business level calculations, sometimes aggregations as well, which is fully designed to answer all the requirements from the reporting, uh, which is called 
gold layer of the data, which can be a data warehouse, it can be a semantic model, it can be anything, but the, the concept is that this is the highest level of quality of the data. You matched everything you could um, from different systems. You have reconciled all these numbers from the source system. This is the best quality of the data, and this is normally the source of all the mission critical reports and dashboards in the organization uh, that people go and use on a daily basis. This is called medallion architecture, this multi-layer design with bronze, silver, gold. Now, it is not always these three layers. Sometimes for some people it might be less, for some might be more. However, the three layers of bronze, silver, and gold are the most common ways of building it. So when you want to build something like this, one of the benefits of having something like this is that it increases the trust in the organization to the data analytics project because now um, people don't have to wait for months for building a self-service report that they could have built from the bronze data. On the other hand side, when you defined all of these characteristics and you said that gold layer data is highest quality, bronze is not like that, but you still can go and build it, these definitions and uh, char characteristics of the data that you have defined is going to help them to understand how this works. And as a result, this altogether helps the trust of the organization on the analytics project goes high. And as a result, you have a successful data analytical project regardless of the technology. Now let's talk about how something like this works in a diagram view. So I'm going to switch into my screen and showing you this little diagram that I have here. So this is a kind of a diagram of what we are looking for when we are talking about medallion architecture. Data comes from the source system into a bronze layer, raw data from there into the silver layer, which is cleansed, more conformed, from there into the gold layer, which is business level curated data and the reports coming from there. However, you can have reports from any of these levels. It is just the matter of labeling them. Inside Microsoft Fabric, if you want to build this, and regardless of the technology, you have to know that Regardless of the technology, you can always go and build this. You can build it in on-premises SQL Server, you can go and build it in Snowflake, you can go and build it in Power BI, pure Power BI, or you can even go and build it in Microsoft Fabric or any other place. In Microsoft Fabric, this is kind of a approach that I normally use, but every person, every organization might come with a different architecture. I normally suggest to use Lake House as a bronze layer. The main reason for that is that when you have lake house there, because it is raw data, even if you want to save file format, you can still save it in that format. But there is no problem uh, if you want to use warehouse in there. Warehouse or lake house both would work. My suggestion would be a lake house. From there, you'll build a silver layer. Silver layer, I normally suggest warehouse because now we have the data in the format of normally a star schema, dimension table, fact tables. Uh, which is conformed dimensions and the data is cleansed. The warehouse normally works best because of course on the other hand side you have also the full SQL capabilities using the SQL endpoint. And then the gold layer, I normally use the Power BI semantic model as a gold layer, a shared semantic model that can be used across many other places. This is the place that we can have relationship between tables in a way that answer all the reporting requirements. We can have business logic defined as DAX measures or DAX calculations, and all of that to be used in the report. Of course, you can build a medallion architecture with all of these three to be lake house, with all of these three to be warehouse or KQL databases, event house. It doesn't matter which technology you are using or which item, which type of object you use inside that technology. The main important thing about it is to design it in these layers and have the characteristics of each layer saying that bronze data is raw data. If you are going to use it, it is at your own risk because this is the source system data, things like that so that the business knows what they are going to use. Now switching this to this camera again, 
Um, with medallion architecture, there always come some misconceptions, which now that you understand what the medallion architecture is, you can understand those misconceptions as well. Like one of the misconceptions is that should you choose between Microsoft Fabric or medallion architecture? Well, this is not really a question to ask because these two are totally different things. Microsoft Fabric is a technology which using that you go and build a data analytics project, whereas medallion architecture is an architecture of building uh, data in three different layers. You can build that using any technology. Or the other question is that if I go and use Power BI, Snowflake, Microsoft Fabric together, can I still use medallion architecture? Of course, whatever technology you use. Uh, even old on-premises technologies such as DB2, if you go and use them, you can still build medallion architecture. In some technologies, such as Microsoft Fabric and some of the new technologies, you have some ways to make it even easier, such as in Microsoft Fabric, we have the feature called endorsement certification, which would help to label your objects, say that this is like certified object, which is similar concept to the gold uh, layer. And I have explained that in another video. Uh, another misconception about medallion about medallion architecture is that should you always like have three layers, less, more, this really depends on the scenario you are going to build. So it's not one, uh, one, lay one design that fits all the organizations. In other videos, I have uh, explained about the difference between warehouse and lake house, which I highly recommend you go and check those out in case you have this question that should you be going and using lake house or warehouse for the bronze layer, for example. In my opinion, they are all kind of the same, slight differences, so go and check out those videos as well. I hope this video helped you to understand what the medallion architecture is in data analytics project, how that can be used, what are the benefits of it, why it exists. Uh, in some other videos in the future, I might go and actually build a medallion architecture from scratch in a full video to show you through a demo. Until that video, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you like this, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Bye.